Hey, everybody. Welcome to Plant-Based Tour Guide Podcast with your host, Mike Knight. It doesn't matter if you're just gathering information about getting plant-based or you've been plant-based for years or somewhere in between. This show is for you. So get ready for Mike's high-energy show fueled by his passion for bringing information, education, and motivation about all things in the plant-based life. So let's get today's show started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Plant-Based Tour Guide. I'm your host, Mike Knight. And as always, I hope you're having a phenomenal day. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I can just spend a little time with you sharing knowledge, information, and motivation about plant-based and all things plant-based and crushing stereotypes, myths, and all that stuff and keeping you updated and always doing my best just to bring that to you. And so I was wondering, you know, have you been to like one of the veg fest yet? Have you been to those in your area? Pretty cool. If you haven't, well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Because who I've got on the show today is somebody that talk about veg fest. She stays. All right. We've got Helene. And Helene is in charge of multiple. <laughs> now, multiple veg fests. I mean, just setting up one. I mean, even any of you listening to this that, you know, may be doing that for business or anything else in life, if ever done like event planning, you know, one big event is enough to really drive you crazy. All right. Well, she has multiple. All right. She's going to talk about it. She's going to be in multiple cities and, spoiler alert, it's pretty cool. She's thinking about even going outside the country to somewhere very cool to do one. So you got to stay tuned and listen in for that. But also, of course, it talks about her story, her journey, you know, and how she got to where she is. And you hear the passion in her as to why she does it and why she has expanded now and taking on, you know, more and more of these festivals. Why? Because that's her passion to get the knowledge and the information out there to people and bring people together. Okay. So. Everybody, please get ready to listen to Helene. All right, well, Helene, thank you so much for coming on Plant Based Tour Guide. Woo! <laughs> ah, I appreciate it, and it's you know, and it's so cool. I got to say from the outset because you know I've seen you, of course, with what we're getting into, what you do, and of course I've seen you and followed you there. But then I think I told you your name comes up with a mutual buddy. Of you and I both, Ronnie Tsunami. Yes. And and then Ronnie, staying in touch with him, gets uh, me involved with him as well on the Plant Based Network. And then you're an advisor for the Plant Based Network. So yes. I'm like, you know what? All the stars are lining up. That this podcast is long overdue. So I'm excited to get going. <laughs> me too. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, look, I always love just kind of starting out, you know, if you don't mind, just. Your quote beginnings, because I love everyone telling their, if you will, path to going plant based, because it, it's always different. And I, you know, lines, because I love that, because it, as you and I know, and you again, when people hear about you and what you do, they'll get it that you come in contact with a lot of different people at a lot of different stages. So mm-hmm. I'd love you to start there. It's kind of what was that for you? How, you know, when did you turn plant based? That's a, that's a great question because for me, this journey has been over 30 years. Because mm-hmm. when I was 19, I went vegetarian. A long time ago. So I gave up every, all meat, like all seafood that was easy. I never ate it anyway. And then, you know, vegetarian. I still love a vegetarian. And over the course of those years, I dabbled with animal rights. I'm cruelty free. I stopped wearing leather. I started wearing leather. I moved to different states. And when I moved to North Carolina, so I've been in California. I'm from New York. And in North Carolina is where I met a group of people about a little over, oh, it's going to be be nine years, almost nine years ago. And they were all vegan. And at that point, I wasn't eating eggs, and I wasn't drinking dairy because I'd moved over to almond milk for a couple reasons, less fat, less calories, and less expensive, and I liked the taste better. So, and it, you know, you learn that you're lactose intolerant uh, from family members after living for 30-something years on this planet. So I... I became vegan. It'll be, it'll be 
was eight and a half years. It was not too long after I moved to North Carolina. And I just think never really looked back. And then on top of that, I'm vegan and gluten-free because I'm gluten intolerant. I'm dairy intolerant. And I could, I would never change anything. And plus, everybody has a journey. And I've certainly had a journey that ebbed and flowed mm-hmm. over 30 years. I mean, I was outside of a limo driving through Manhattan for my sister-in-law's bridal shower, yelling at people that he'd murder. <laughs> that was like, I was 19. <laughs> you had a passion. <laughs> So I totally get it. I totally get the newbie people that are, like, incredibly passionate and just going out there and, like, doing everything they can. And then the people that have kind of been here for a while, they kind of, you know, chill out, you know, somewhat. And they kind of just feel their way and learn where their place is and what they want to do, what their activism is, because everybody's got something different. So, yeah, you're right. I meet a lot of people at different stages of whatever their path is. Well, so when you're meeting them, and that's why I'd like to talk about that because, again, it, it is, yeah, you just mentioned it. You and I know some people, like you did, go over time. Some people, hey, they're, they're wired where they may, you know, nowadays go, you know, quote, just quick change or whatever. Yep. What advice do you give me? When people start asking you, um, I'm curious, is, is there anything you say, hey, well, if you got to do one thing, phase out X first or, you know, just any advice you give them? Well, one of the things I'll say if somebody is just like, well, I don't know where to start or what I should do, I kind of go along the lines of, like, the first thing I would advise giving up is dairy. It's insidious. Absolutely, absolutely horrible for your body. So, I mean, I don't even go to meat first. I go to dairy. You know, it's, it's addicting. You know, the cheese has the addictive qualities. And it's just really, really, really bad for you. So... Uh, start there. I mean, uh-huh. I mean, just do one meal a week. I don't. I mean, I don't push. I don't. I don't. I. Mm-hmm. I don't believe pushing works for me. Right. I mean, obviously, different people have different strategies and different activism. But the most important thing to me is is that you have support, that you understand that you can do this. That my festivals give you the opportunity to try pretty much anything vegan, and <laughs> you can. I mean. There, there's, I mean, at this point, and, and the Andy from Andy Tabor from Compassion from Compassion Company has a shirt. It says, "Anything you can eat, I can eat vegan." I quote that a lot because at this <laughs> point, in the way things are going, that's a hundred percent true. Oh yeah, anything could be made vegan. It is phenomenal nowadays, and you know what? It's so cool. That you said, because just so everyone knows, it's not like you and I, we always make it to where I don't talk like quote before, so there's nothing staged. I love that you, you're also in agreement with dairy first. I hear that from so many people, and I agree. And I love it because sometimes that shocks people. Because you know how it is, a lot of people maybe listen, that they may be thinking, oh, I'm sure they'll say red meat first. I'm like, you know what? What I hear over and over again is exactly what you just said. If you got to phase out one first, phase out the dairy, and then start, you know, knocking over the dominoes as you go through life, but... Yeah, it, it's 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 so cool that you're on the same uh, your pattern there as well. Because yeah, that, it is just uh, dairy was like a lot. Dairy was ravaging me. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Everyone's lactose intolerant, whether you want to believe it or not. Everybody is. We're just not. We're not made to have dairy in our bodies after we're weaned from our parents or mom. So, I mean, that's what I say to people. Like, look, there's no other animal on this planet that consumes dairy outside of being weaned from their parent. Nobody, nobody drinks another another animal milk except for humans. And there's a reason why you hear people going, <clears throat> or they have belly aches, or they have, you know, uh, colon distress. It's because of dairy, more than likely. Yeah. And then I know, like, I've got yeah. ethical choices uh, educator, and I'd be in the classroom with the students, and they'd, they'd be like, I'm not intolerant to dairy. I'm not supposed to. I'm not intolerant. I'm not supposed to eat this. I'm not supposed to that. But I still eat ice cream. I said, what happens to you? And they're like, oh, it doesn't feel good, but I love ice cream. <laughs> well, think, but the denial is of, like, the human population is that – they're like, well, I really, really love this, and I know that I don't feel good after eating it, but I'll, I'll deal with it. Mm-hmm. And, and the good news is for those people, as you and I know, and yep. for our ice cream lovers, don't you worry. There are some phenomenal plant-based ice creams that are now out there. I had 
a chocolate milkshake at a local restaurant here. I'm out of Charlotte called uh-huh. Bean. Absolutely floored me. Floored me when I had it. I was like, wow, this has been, they nailed it. They nailed it. I mean, I'm like, I don't care what people say. Bring on a blind taste test. It, it will fool everybody. I 100% agree. It's with, with oat milk now. Oh, milk is so good. It's yep. ridiculously good. Oh, and it's so funny. You literally were describing me. I, I was telling people kind of part of my journey and, and talking about dairy was I was, just, I was that person, always doing like the little snort and all like that. And it's kind of get used to it in life. And then all of a sudden I'm sitting there one time, I'm like, wait a minute. I've got, this is irritating. I've had this for years. And I, and I went to my doctor. I said, look, I have this like year round. I, you know, I'm like, I get it if it were like the change of seasons, a couple times a year, et cetera, et cetera, plus my sinus infection. And I said, why? I got an allergist. Allergist test me. I'm allergic to nothing. And it's one of those times in your life that you're actually bummed out. You know, when a doctor tells you that, she's like, no, I want to know. Just tell me there's a cause. Let's look at it. And he literally, we're in the, you're, you're in like the, the room, exam room or whatever. And I swear, he literally did like out of a movie. He kind of looked over his shoulder, made sure the door was shut, and he leaned closer. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? He goes, he goes, Mike, I tell you what, though, off the record, I hear that if you cut out dairy, a <laughs> lot of people that goes away. I cut out dairy, boom. I mean, like, you give me dairy now, I'm like a science experiment. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you know, if, you know, it's funny. I can always tell if, you know, if by chance something ever accidentally it used to happen back in the day, you know, you think you're eating something that has no dairy in it. All of a sudden I find out it did, and sure enough, I would just be sitting there snorting. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that is so, so truthful. That that's exactly what cause was. Cause I did that, knock on wood. I mean, no sinus infection since I went off dairy. No, I'm not. I'm not the king of snort or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, every, obviously, would it be great if everyone we spoke to just decided to like hang up eating any animal? That'd be awesome. The planet would be helpful, helped, and their bodies would be helped, and the animals would be helped. But you know, I totally understand that it's not easy. It's, I mean, not a lot of people can watch the movie Earthlings, which I won't even watch because I get it. That's it's, yeah. it's, it's hard. It's harsh. Not a lot okay. of people can sit through that movie. I mean, I heard people go through like five or six minutes and then they're done. But you make it through that movie, a lot of people just turn the switch right away. They just go hardcore. I'm vegan today. You know, I kind of point people in the direction of forks over knives. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no animal, anything in there that'll make you cringe. It's all science. It's Dr. You know, it's Dr. Campbell. I mean, that's, yep. that is like to me, if you can watch that movie, you watch Forks Over Knives and eat dairy after that, you didn't watch the movie. Yeah, you still have to part it. <laughs> or you went out of the room. You're right. You're right. I mean, that, right. I mean, it's because it's science. It's fact-based. Yeah. And, and you know you can't you can't argue with facts. Well, I guess nowadays people argue science facts all the time. But you know you used to not be able to argue science because it's science. <laughs> yep. It's not debatable, but it's become debatable. So yeah, it's really interesting. So that you know the plant pure nation, vegetated, focus over knives. You know um, the the more recent ones, which are totally escaping my brain right now. Uh, the athlete one. Was the name uh, of that? Game Changer. Game Changer? Game Changer, right. Was yeah. That was huge. I know a lot of people watched that, and there were parts of that movie that just made, I mean, men go, oh, maybe I need to be vegan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right? So, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean that's, one of the, that's one of the key things. I mean, I can only say I offer my help to strangers in stores. I give my card out and say, look, seriously, if you need help, just contact me. Mm-hmm. And I will. I'll help you. I'll point you in the direction of somebody in your community that can help you, because we're in so many areas now that I probably know somebody where you are, or I know somebody who writes books willing to help, no matter where they are. So and you certainly do, and that's going to lead us into all right. So not only did you go plant based, and like you said, get passionate about it, uh, you decided tailing right off what you just said, to really find ways to spread the word, spread information, and bring people together. You know? So could you tell everyone what you created 
um, the veg fest and vegan fest. And so if you could tell everybody about those, and what was that like? I mean, what was, the, I guess, you know, like the tipping point or that, you know, thought light bulb went off your head. You're like, Hey, I want to do this. Was it, I'm sure it was just something you did, uh, festivals for other things earlier and quote career slash life, you know, that you're like, Hey, I could do it here. Or is this just labor love out of the gate? I'll figure out how to do it. And off you went. Well, I, I, I grew up, with a dad that was a catering hall manager and me and all my siblings. I have three older siblings. We all worked with them. So it's kind of, and I have a mom that, I mean, neither of my parents are alive anymore, but my mom was the type of person that would go and join a group and then be leading the group, like, within a month. So in my gene pool, it's just that. So I... I kind of, kind of like flubbed through life trying to figure out what to do. A nine to five in an office job never suited me at all. It just, it just wasn't my thing. So I, I even, oh, there go the dogs. So I even went to like, I went to get my master's in education for school counseling because I was like, oh, I would love to do that. And I couldn't get a job. It was hard to find a job in school counseling here in North Carolina. So I just kind of fell back on what my skill set is business, um, networking, uh, social media. I'm kind of addicted to it, so I do social media marketing as part of, like, my job. And then in 2014, I had a break between a practicum and an internship, and I needed something to do. I couldn't go work because I had a full-time internship coming that fall. And I kind of said to the community here, I said, hey, do you guys want to vet just? And they said yes. <laughs> so <laughs> over the course of that summer, we created and started Triangle Veg Fest, and in four months we did our first one. I mean, no joke, four months. Wow! Over that year, we had our first event. In my head, my hope was to have like two thousand people attend, but I wouldn't. I didn't verbalize it because my concern was people would laugh at me because it was, you know, four months. And we did. We had we had it at Carolina Pines Park in Raleigh, and like 2,000 people showed up, and we outgrew the park. It was too much. There wasn't enough room for parking. It was amazing. It was like 30 awesome. vendors. And I said, okay, uh, let's keep going. So Piedmont Farm Mental Refuge has been a part of our events from day one. And they present our event now in, in two areas, in Raleigh and Durham and in Asheville. So we just kind of grew into our own nonprofit in 2015. And I set a business plan up because, you know, when you start a business, a nonprofit's a business, you write a business plan. And I, uh, it's like, you know, a five-year plan or whatever it is. And we, I completed the plan in a year, everything on it. I had no idea where we were going to go, but I wanted a monthly market. I wanted to do a 5K. I, we did it. I, I we just I did a we have a vegan mac and cheese cook off, uh-huh. and then it was the hey, can you come to my area and do this here? That came up in 2015, and in 2018 we did Wilmington, North Carolina. Nice. And then 19 as well. And then came the calls of, I don't want to do this anymore. We take over my events. And then we added Nashville and Asheville to our list. And then we added Knoxville. This was all last year. This is January last year. Oh, Nashville, my gosh. Knoxville. And then Asheville came around in May. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. We also added Edison, which we did last year, which was New Jersey, which we're not doing again this year. And it's been amazing, like absolutely amazing. We, I've been asked to come to many different cities. We're starting Greenville this year in South Carolina. Nice. And yeah, like right now on the books are, are five veg tests for 2020, and Wilmington oh is being worked on. So I... Uh, you know, if they if you build it, they will come. Truth in treating people well and making vendors a priority makes a huge difference because I'm very vendor focused. Uh-huh. As much as the people attendees are incredibly important, we would never have an event without the vendors, and it's their livelihood, it's their business. 
and they they may be looking like they're having a grand old time and having tons of fun at the events, but everyone has to remember the vendors are working and they paid to be there and they're there to make money. Yep. So I try my best to make it so they do. And that means they keep coming back. Remember right. where and I go. The word, and the word gets spread. It's awesome. So yeah. like today alone I just like Nashville is a music city. The event's never had live music before. I have an abundance of live music for Nashville this year. The talent's incredible. Yeah. Like super, oh. super and Greenville we're, we're calling a fun fest. So Greenville Fun Fest, a vegan event for the community, mm-hmm. with the That's goal of people coming, not having any idea that it's a vegan event. Mm-hmm. Just come. It, 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 every event looks like any other event you'd ever go to. Yep. It just oh, yeah. everything, no animals were harmed. So we're going to try out a different name and see how that goes. Well, very good. So give people an idea. Maybe some people listening – that haven't been to one. I know, like you said, the vendors and all. What is normally what you try and do just to give people an idea when they come to a festival so it's kind of get them excited and have some people maybe do some traveling. Of course, in the show notes and all later, you and I will give everybody, you know, locations and ways to, you know, find out where you're going to be and all. But uh, do you mind for people that maybe haven't been to one, kind of, you know, what normally goes on, what they normally can expect? Well, any festival you've ever been to has typically live music, has vendors, and just fun family area for the kids. And we have all of that. We have vendors ranging from soap to, like, tons of different food. I mean, you can find, like, fried vegan chicken wings and fried vegan fish and, like, hamburgers and, I mean, just a ridiculous amount of delicious food and art and body stuff. And like I said, everything, everything's vegan. So all these vendors, a lot of nonprofits, a lot of sanctuaries, uh, bookstores, like Firestone Books from Asheville. I mean, there's just, I, I, I mean, like I, the best way to describe it is any festival you would go to. It looks exactly. It looks exactly the same. <laughs> it's, <laughs> that, it's that no animals are harmed. Everything is vegan at the event. Everything those vendors are talking about and selling or or peddling or discussing is all vegan. Yep. So now let me ask you on that: Is there anything I'm curious that kind of just uh, maybe uh, I don't know, like shocked is the right word, but like a cool surprise or whatever, um, kind of like that? Maybe what they made into food. Or maybe even, um, you know, uh, articles, like you said, soap or something. I'm just curious if there's anything that just kind of, you're like, whoa, that's cool. Typically the food. I mean, people come, I mean, there's, there's just, uh, are you the puppies? Everybody, it's food. It's, it's a food-centered event. I call it the gateway drug. So, I mean, you come and you're like, I know the people come to the event sometimes and they'll order something, like, say, yeah. like a vegan sausage because it's beyond sausage. And they're eating and their friends will be like, you know, you know, that's vegan. And they'll be like, no, it's not. No, no, really. <laughs> it's, that's vegan. Or the cupcakes, the desserts. They're like, what do you mean there's no eggs in here? There's no eggs in there. You don't need eggs to bake. What about milk? Well, you don't need milk. You can use, you know, non-dairy milk. Yep. And what about butter? Well, there's vegan butter. Or you can use oil. Or you can use applesauce. You can use bananas. I mean, there's all these different ways that you can make things, and they're absolutely delicious. So that's what I really, really like is that people like eating this food, and they obviously post on Instagram of how, like, wow, this is this is incredible. We also have like a really fun, like family fun zone with like life size games and art they can do and coloring. And sometimes some of the events we have a magician and we have a DJ at like all our events so that there's some music in the background that people can groove to. And it's just, you know, the live music this year I think is going to be a game changer because I, there's so much, there's, there's some really talented individuals that want to come and sing, including Ronnie from the Plant Based yep. Network. You know? yep. So he will be singing at all the events this year, and he'll be speaking at all the events this year. So, uh, 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard because I'm so in the trenches on about the events. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I love to attend other people's events, but even when I attend them, I still end up helping because I know a lot of <laughs> vendors, so I'll do whatever I can to make sure that they have yep. a good day. So, but it's fun to go where I'm not responsible. <laughs> so I get to enjoy it or I get to like eat because I don't eat at my events. <laughs> so. and, and I tell you what, you are so correct, too, that you get people. Those are some of the, quote, funnest arguments, if you will, I've ever had in my life. When people are arguing, no way this is vegan. This isn't plant based. I'm like, yes, it is. And I mean, you just have people that like, they almost want to have a knockdown drag out with you. Like, nah, you're just trying to say that to convince me to try something else. And because nowadays, you're right. It's, you know, for people listening, if you haven't done it, I mean, the food choices that are now out there, I mean, recipes you can get online or places, you know, to go in restaurants, whatever. I mean, they're all there. It, 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 it blows my mind the flavor now. Because I'll admit, back yeah. when I first started, yeah. it was limited in a lot of stuff. I will admit, back in the day, for me, it's been about nine plus years. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff did taste like maybe, you know, cardboard with a little bit of you know, salt on it or something. You know, but now, oh my gosh, it, it, it'll fool you every time. Oh, yeah, and I'm gluten free as well. So going vegan, gluten free, having like something like the Beyond products be vegan and gluten free is is incredible because um, food isn't cardboard anymore when it <laughs> when it's vegan and gluten free. I mean we've got great bakers and like just the other night I made sausage and peppers and onions with the Beyond sausage. Oh. It was so good. Yep. <laughs> There's nothing left and I was like, are we gonna fight over what's in that pan? <laughs> this is so good. Uh yeah, I mean, if you don't want to go, then if you have the people who don't want to go to the, the meat derivatives, which I understand, because there's a whole section of people that are like, no, I didn't give up meat because I like the taste of meat. I just don't even want to look at something that looks like it. And you've got tempeh, you've got soy, you've got textured yeah. vegetable protein. I have a new vendor that contacted me this week, last week, and they're making a self-stable like vegan meat product out of pea protein. Whoa. Yeah. They haven't signed right. up yet, but hopefully they will. And I can't 100% remember their name. But they're coming. I was like, you have a what? No soy. So I said, you have made a shelf-stable, think textured vegetable protein, which is soy-based, but the same concept that you would rehydrate with water or vegetable stock or whatever, made uh-huh. with pea protein. And I was like, that's what the Beyond Burger is made out of. I was like, yeah, you cool. need to come to my event. <laughs> I was like, yes, <laughs> yeah. you need to come because that's incredible. And it's gluten-free, it's obviously vegan, and soy-free, which is, you know, the high allergen. And, I mean, that's one of the things I love about being in the seat I'm in is that I get the phone calls from the vendors who are doing stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, you need to come. <laughs> I was like, yep. I want to meet you because I want to try your product. So just come. <laughs> So and that's the reason for people listening. Like, look, if you're in the area we've been talking about, we've been talking about you kind of getting your North Carolina, South Carolina, um, and Tennessee. Virginia and Tennessee, or, or Virginia can travel down, I guess I'm thinking Raleigh, you know, people yeah. near there that, look, we'll have information for these. Or for people that travel, hey, at least now with the information, you'll know when these festivals are. You can make a, you know, uh, you know, book a little weekend getaway or something in one of these locations. Um, and other people, then find and look for some that are maybe near you because, you know, the cool thing is, like you said, you get to try so many new things. I mean, because that's the big thing. you got to remember all these vendors, like you said, are coming in with new products and all. And typically most of them, they're going to be cooking something and a lot of times have, like, you know, even like a little um, take-home demo or something like that. I mean, it's a, it, it is a great way to really get that knowledge going and to bring people that may be, you know, going – I think it'll be hard, or how could you do X, Y, Z? Because the knowledge that's there, your speakers and these vendors can also give people a lot of information. Oh, gosh, we haven't touched on the speakers. The education component of the events is I, I do a dedicated education day at a lot of the events because then the speakers don't have to compete with the festival, and you can literally come and sit down and just be educated the whole day. And I do have some vendors there, especially food, so that you don't have to leave. 
But I, I mean, my lineup of speakers, I is uh-huh. almost full. I mean, Dr. Milton Mills will be at like a bunch of the events, and so will Dr. Gregor. Dr. Gregor nice. will be joining us this year at a few of the events, and then, I mean, <laughs> Dr. Gr- you Dr. Ellen, Ellen Jaffe uh, Jones, yeah, she'll be in she'll be in Greenville and Asheville. I love I love nice. her. so She's awesome. Yes, and then um, Sid Garza Hillman's coming to Asheville from California. He is dynamic. When he gets on the stage, he just turns on. I, I mean, I highly, highly recommend seeing him speak. He's an ultra marathoner out of California. He runs, he runs the Stanford Inn, and that's an all vegan inn in California as well. And of course, Ron is, Ron is speaking at every event. Kim Barnes, Kimberly Barnes, I met in Atlanta, and. She's going to come and make you squirm in your seat to discuss, like, you know, she's going to discuss what it's like to be an African-American woman walking on this planet and to bring up those uncomfortable topics of what it's like to be in her shoes. So that's really, it's, yeah, and then, and then the Cows Come Home Sanctuary out of, North, out of Eastern Tennessee is presenting Nashville Fetch Fest. So Randy, who runs that sanctuary, will be a speaker in Nashville, which is incredibly important because of what she's doing and helping them to raise money for, you know, for the cows. So, mm-hmm. and like I said, Lenora Brayford from Piedmont Farm Animal Refuge presents Asheville and Triangle. She always speaks at the events as well, and they are doing incredible stuff here in the Triangle of North Carolina. I mean, Dr. Betty... Oh my God, Dr. Betty Smith from up in Maryland is like—I don't know how old is she is. Seventy-eight. She's she's not young, and she is probably one of the most. She's probably the most fit human on the planet. No joke. She's like running. Uh, she does. She hardly sleeps, and she hardly eats anything. Her body is a machine. She's been tested by doctors. Her story. Uh, it's just just meeting her, you're like, oh, you just bow down. I mean, Kevin Archer is going to be speaking about sustainability and like, uh, you know, creating farms. Yeah. So that'd be really cool. I mean, I'm really filling up my speaker list. I mean, for all these events, uh, Dr. Shayla Toombs will be coming. She's from uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. A lot of doctors for Greenville. It's Dr. Heavy, Dr. Mills, Dr. Milton Mills, Dr. Gregor. Dr. Priya from Atlanta, Ellen and Ron will be speaking there. So it's very heavy. I always like to have at least one doctor and at least one athlete at every event. Uh-huh. Because, you know, you should, you know, doctors, I mean, they tend, they tend to be more of an authority on subjects because they went to all that schooling. Typically, you know, these ones are fantastic. And then, you know, athlete-wise, you or people want to know can i get enough protein can i be an athlete can i you know can i do this and not yep. fall apart can i run 100 miles on a vegan diet and and still have energy or will i you know my body just collapse uh, you can <laughs> can i be a vegan bodybuilder oh. and and oh. be you know yes you can and these athletes kind of tell you they can show oh. you how to it's do phenomenal. it. It's phenomenal. Yeah, what people could do. I mean, I've had people I've had on kind of like like what you're talking about. I you know, I've had several ultra marathon runners on. One even she did this this I don't know if I heard I, I, I've got to remember what it's it may be called the World Marathon Tour, but I'm probably butchering that. But she did in seven marathons in seven days on seven continents. Oh, I heard it about was, it was her, her telling that story just blew me away. I was like, I mean, that's just hard enough as it is, but if you're not getting nutrients, and, I mean, yeah, you are going to be in trouble. You know, if you don't have following a lifestyle, you know, and so that was, yeah, so cool uh, to hear her story. And like you said, I mean, you know, had, uh, you know, David Carter, the 300 vegan on a while back, talking about his NFL journey. I mean, you're talking about, a def- you know, a defensive end in the NFL uh, that you know he's got to have mass and size. And yeah. So it was so cool to hear him talk about that. And say, look, here's how I did it. You know, 
Um, and now, of course, you and I both know so many people like the Tennessee Titans. Yeah. You know, they were, of course, some game changers. And so many now that are seeing, all right, you know what? This whole plant based thing, not, I mean, and that's, as you know, you and I know, especially at the athlete level, elite athletes, they're all going to, you want, they're going to see it, really. Look, this is better for my conditioning longevity. And to be blunt, it's better for my money. Because yeah. they're going to be able to perform at a higher level and perform longer. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's, hey, you and I know, we will take people any way they want to come over and hang out in the fan, in the club. Come on. I mean, because it's, yeah, everyone dude, that's, has their own degree. So it's got to be as warm and welcoming as possible. My events are warm, welcome, open hugs. I try not to have, uh, I try not to have it be a place where you feel intimidated. I, I I don't want my vendors or anybody there to have someone come up to them and if they if they are different from them in any way, uh, to put them down, or vice versa. The attendees doing that to the vendors. It has happened and it upsets me every time because you know you're not going to help anyone to come over to our team if they feel like. We're not a team. Exactly. Yep. I'm it doesn't, I love that you do that. Yeah, it doesn't work. I, in my opinion, it doesn't work. So, like I said, people have different types of activism, and I have many friends who are the more in-your-face, you know, DXZ, um, the cube type activism. It's not my thing, but, you know, it does work for people. It does. It does get bring people in, in that way. I don't feel it brings as many people in, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't. It doesn't mean that what they're doing isn't important as well. Just mm-hmm. like the people do the vigils. That's not my thing either. That that just seems to be something that'll just rip my heart out. And I have the friends that go and do the vigils for the pigs and the chickens and yeah. bless them because mm-hmm. it it does. It rips their hearts every time. And, but, you know, it's important for those animals to know that before they died, that somebody cared. Yep. Those animals know, they sense that. And everyone knows a dog and a cat that. And I think that's, to me, you know, I tell people that that's the beautiful thing, kind of what you're saying. We can all find our way to, quote, get involved, give back, participate, et cetera. And one of the best things I love, I tell people about plant based, you know, we always look for things in life, you know, where, hey, can I get more than just for one? Can I get more than a one for one change? And I tell people, that's the beautiful thing is that you go plant based, irregardless of your initial intentions path, by your action, you're now helping the environment. Yep. You know, you're helping, you know, animal cruelty. Yep. And you are also helping your health. Yes. And, you know, and be an example. I said, so that's the cool thing. I'm like, look, you don't have to do anything, quote, extra. Just, you know, once you start making that one step forward and start going down the path, you're actually got three paths going at the same time for you. And I mean, to me, that's just, that's a great thing. You know, because I, ironically enough, I went initially for health, even though I'm a major animal lover. It's almost as I went through, there was part of me that said, gee, I can't believe that, you know, animals wasn't actually my initial driving cause as much as, you know, I'm just, I'm that guy, you know, I, I'll slam the brakes on on a back country road and grab a turtle every single time and take him across the road. And, you know, and I'm just you know, always rescuing things. And I'm like, that was me. But actually, you know, health brought me down. But you know what? I, once I did it, I started helping all three. I agree 100%. I, I'm also, and if I started for health, I mean, I understood the other, the other tenets of it. But health is what pushed me over into the veganism part. So, and it'd be, you know, it's hard to be in this for a long period of time and not begin to understand the other impacts. And I kind of, when I was in the classroom, I would say, you know, there's, there's three different pieces of this. Which one resonates with you? Is it the planet? Is it the animals? Or is it your health? Because one of those things is what's probably going to grab you, and then you go from there. I mean, eventually one of those is going to grab you, whether it's your father has a heart attack, so you go health. You know, you see animals dying, and you go for the animals. You see the planet burning, you think about the planet and go, what can I do to make a difference? Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody has their, their triggers. Everybody has the things around them 
and the reasons why they went when they did what they did at whatever time it is that they did it. Yep. And then the most important thing I feel is the seeds. It's it's the planting the seeds, and if you're fortunate enough to see it take growth, that's fantastic. But even if you don't, you know, you know you planted a seed, and it's something that they can reflect back on and go, and not a negative light, but a positive one. Mm-hmm. When that time comes, that triggers them to go, oh, yeah, I remember I learned that from that woman or in that classroom or from that movie or from that festival or from my friend, whatever it is. But, you know, eventually everybody seems to, seeds tend to sprout at some point in somebody's life. Hopefully if you live long enough. And and the the cool thing is it gives people knowledge because, granted, thank goodness it's so cool. This is so prevalent and the knowledge get more and more out there to where, if you will, the hard conversations or, 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 you know, the the hard questions, sometimes you'll get attacked by some people when they go plant-based from maybe family, friends, whatever, or actually, you know, going down because of the knowledge out there. However, it's always nice when you do something new to kind of, to your point, have that information to where you can answer that question to people. You know, when people, you know, you go plant-based and you tell a family member, and you, some people, it still is out there. You get a family member going, oh, no, Ivor, you'll get no protein. And that is just, you know, oh, no, you can't be an athlete anymore. What are you going to do? You're gonna... And now, you know, with these you know, that's why I love doing this show and you with the Veg Fest and bringing all these people together to, you know, give people kind of ammunition, if you will. They just say, hey, I have this knowledge, kind of like you said, that those, you know, planted seeds of knowledge that they can now have at their disposal to say, you know what, actually, X, Y, Z, you know, this is, you know, what actually happened. They're like, really? And then you never know. Then you have someone else that's interested now. Exactly. You hope, you know, I mean, it's always the exactly. people, like, I would never, every time somebody says I would never go vegan, I would never give up, whatever it is, I say to them, we all said that. Every single mm-hmm. one of us who's vegan has said the exact same words. Yep. I said I would never give up whipped cream or Parmesan cheese. That's what kept me from going vegan. Those two things. Those two things now exist in the vegan world, and as far as I can tell, taste almost identical to what mm-hmm. I was eating when I was eating the dairy counterparts. It's awesome. It is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Well, real quick, because I know you are running crazy, and I appreciate your time. So, I mean, it, oh, my gosh, I figured this. I figured knowing you and I, we'd just start talking and talking. Real quick, then. <laughs> What um, are what are kind of your go tos? Because you stay busy, you know. What are maybe some go to quick fix or anything or something you're like, like I always have to have this or these things in my cupboard no matter what. I'm just curious for people listening. What is kind of your go to stuff? <laughs> it's really funny. Literally, if like an army of twenty people came to my house right now, I could feed them, and that's no <laughs> joke. And still have more food. I uh, oddly enough, I eat mac and cheese weekly. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be Mondays. <laughs> I, I always have gluten-free pasta in the house. Always. It's Bio Nature is my favorite brand. And I always have almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. I use organic from Kirkland from Costco. Lately, I have to have oat milk in the house. I use Oatly because I like the fact that they don't have oil in there. Uh-huh. Other ones put sunflower oil. Sunflower oil. They put oil in it, and I don't understand why my milk has to have oil in it. So... <laughs> I don't, I don't, I just don't understand it. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's moved my smoothies to another level. I always have organic frozen fruit because I drink smoothie every morning. That's my breakfast. I don't nice. do caffeine. I don't do coffee. I, I, I run naturally on what I'm doing. So when you see me doing everything that I'm doing, there's no caffeine in my body. There hasn't been. No drugs either. I am just seltzer <laughs> and cookies <laughs> and water are my go-to. I don't drink any alcohol. I don't smoke any cigarettes. I just do. And I'm, I am more tired. I turned 50 in December. So I I find that I'm just, I, I, always, I always take time for myself. 
mm-hmm. every single day. Listen to the body. How busy I am. Every day. I have three dogs, two cats, a boyfriend, a housemate, an exchange student from Germany in my house. <laughs> Right. Oh so there's always something going on. I, I, you know, there are times where I take an hour and I just roll on the floor with the dogs. And I know I've got a lot of stuff to do, but I also know that it's important for me to roll on the floor with the dogs. Mm-hmm. And that's something I think a lot of people need to know. And as for food, oh, stop, there's one of them. As for food, like I said, I mean, on Facebook, I created a, a recipe page, a vegan recipe page called Triangle and Beyond Vegan Recipe Page. Uh huh. So, there's a place you can search and throw recipes that has over a thousand people in it. It's only recipes, no drama, hundred percent. You can and for that's wonderful for new people as well. They can go and nice. and they can go and just search, search soy, search tempeh, search dessert, chocolate, whatever it is, peanut butter. All these recipes. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're, I'm we're, in. we have sweet tooths. We've got. I mean, there's. There's so much stuff in my house. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> narrow it down just like one thing because, I mean, anyone who knows me who's listening to this knows <laughs> they've been here. They're like, she can cook like a three-course meal right oh. now <laughs> with what's in my house, and it's always like that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, look, where um, – and again, we'll put these in show notes, but for people listening, where are some great places for people – to find you, follow you, stay in touch. Oh, that's right. So Triangle Veg Fest is a nonprofit, and that is everywhere. And then the Veg Fest Expos is what we took over last year, and that we throw everything at. So if you follow Veg Fest Expos, we, anything that we do, we post in there, Instagram and Facebook and gotcha. Twitter. And then Nashville Veg Fest has its own everything, and then Asheville Vegan Fest is a little different because it's like, I think it's called, like, Asheville, North Carolina, some vegan North Carolina, I can't remember what it's called, but we had to change the name of it because, but if you search Asheville Vegan Fest, you can find us on Facebook and then Instagram and, and Twitter, I think, and then Greenville Fun Fest is a new one, so okay. that we're building that up. And then Knoxville, it's called Scruffy City Vegan Fest. Ah, cool. It's cool. Yes, yeah, so and that'll be our second year doing that. And then it's called Veg Fest Expos North Carolina on Instagram for Asheville. And then Wilmington Veg Fest as well. I think I got them all. Knoxville, Nashville, Asheville, Durham, <laughs> Greenville, Wilmington. And I'm dabbling in the idea of going to Memphis. That has been that discussion's been opened, but uh-huh. like I said, I'm tired. <laughs> so, and then we're working on. I'm actually working on possibly going to Columbia, the country, and doing Whoa. a school there. Yeah, nice. Nice. that would be in 2021. Okay. Yes. Well, that is cool. Never, well, right. never, never come, but always take time and. Our events are May, June, July, August, and October right now. Okay. All right. Well, everybody, I will have that in the show notes and put that out there so I can make sure everyone gets in touch and gets their information. Uh, I mean, I thank you so much for coming on. Thank it you so awesome much talking for having to you. me. Yeah. Thank you for what you're doing. I mean, putting these festivals on because, as you know, you do stuff like that, and that is just like taking your passion and, and, and putting it, you know, times a thousand or actually 2000 for the first one and thousands continually because it just reaches these people and can change lives. It can. It's a great form of activism of reaching, I mean, reaching 10, 20 plus thousand people a year. Yep. That is awesome. All right. Well, we shall talk soon. I know you and I'll probably even talk in a, you know, more even on a plant-based network and everything. And I'll see you at some of the festivals soon. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I'm really part of your your part of the Plant Based Network team as well. Hey, everybody! Well, how exciting was that, Helene? Thank you so much again for coming on. You rocked it. So cool to hear about her journey. You know the passion that drives her, and then you know where her journey then took her. You know to all these veg fat. I mean, 
how that has just exploded and how it's growing in number, which is awesome, because that means just more and more people are attending and checking it out and getting, you know, that information, knowledge, and exposure, you know, and that's awesome. I mean, you know, that, one of the reasons why I do what I do and just sit here and kind of interview people, run my mouth, is just trying to find out more and give more back to you, the listeners, to hear about what's going on. And I mean, now, my gosh, especially if you're in this area, you've got to come to some of our events. You know, the Triangle Beyond Vegan Recipe page on Facebook, you got to check that out. All right, but then again, I mean, you've got, I love Scruffy City Vegan Fest. They're in Knoxville, Tennessee. That's such a cool name. I think that rocks. I mean, we're going to have all the information in the show notes for you so you can stay in touch with her, follow her, check out some of her veg fest. And like we said in there, you know what? If you're not, you know, close to this side, we're more East Coast in the U.S., if not, find some veg fest near you. All right, just go attend them, take people with you. Like she said, I mean, you're going to get exposed to a lot of great food and vendors and stuff like that. Grab recipes. It is awesome. I'm telling you, I've gone to multiples, and there's a great experience, great people, because everyone is there focused on, hey, I want to share knowledge, share information, you know, and get this out there to the world. So definitely put that on your to-do list. You know, go online. Just, I mean, it's easy. Just, you know, do a Google search for, you know, Vegan Fest, Veg Fest, and see what pops up. Plus, how cool is it? She's thinking about going to Colombia, South America with a Veg Fest. That is so cool. Hey, I want in. I want in. All right. But seriously, everybody, thank you so much again for tuning in. Thanks, all of you that write. Uh, love the emails. Uh, forgive me sometimes if it takes, you know, a, a day or two to respond. Uh, sometimes it is, you know, a mul- you know, a big stack that comes in, which is pretty cool. And so I'm always glad, you know, again, share that knowledge information with people. And so please, you know, again, plantbasedtourguide at gmail.com. Check me out there. Uh, Plantbased Tour Guide at Facebook. You know, you can find it there. Um, I'll ask if you could do one favor. One, if you like what you're hearing and you like the shows, Please forward it on to others, whether it's a repost on Facebook, email, whatever. I'd love for you just to help me spread this knowledge and information. And if you could do me a favor and go to iTunes and just do a real quick, you know, um, rating. That would help me out a whole lot and help the show because, you know, the better the rating, the better the show. But you know how everything works like that. So that would be great if you could just do that small thing. I would really appreciate it. All right, we're going to have everything in the show notes, so you'll check it out. Go check out what she's got going on. And again, everybody, remember, live pure vida.